Okay, so that scene even had a reference to Oracle. Nightfall. In that, it, the whole breaking of Batman's back. It's a very iconic I'll moment. It's, it kicked off a bunch of things. Like That's how Asriel technically gets linked into the whole Batman saga, even, because for a period of time, he takes over for Batman briefly. It doesn't go so well, because Asriel's, well, kind of okay with the murder. It's just the Punisher. But let's not run over the fact that Batman is so paranoid that he built a, ca a bat cave on Arkham Island and sank a shit ton of money into it because just in case this might happen? Batman? It makes you wonder, like, the other places that he's put bat caves that are never going to get used. Like, is there a bat cave in a Walmart somewhere? Well, we could bring up Batman Inc. in this case, but that's always a bad Oh idea. my goodness, I love Batman Inc. I can talk about Batman Inc. all day. Oh can look, there's though? a thing you can blow up. Um, okay, so the reason I love Batman Inc. is that one of the images, and we've talked about this a little bit, but the, the sort of Frank Miller, Alan Moore concept of Batman as this like lone wolf who only, you know, works with Alfred and he's, you know, really damaged and sad. Um, the dude has a huge family, right? And the thing about Batman Inc. is that it's basically just Batman acknowledging the fact that one, he is basically Team America World Police, but forgot them. <laughs> and two, it's just him finally, you know, socializing with other superheroes and taking on the mentorship role that he's always been uncomfortable with. I think it's a really interesting way to expand the character. Well, to, to back up for people that don't quite know what Batman Inc., it literally is Batman goes, you know, I do a pretty good job of making Gotham a little bit better. I wonder if I could make that useful other places as well. It's a franchise. It's, it's Batman Incorporated is basically a comic about the Batman franchise in, like, in universe, as opposed to the Batman franchise out of universe. And it brings up some interesting concepts like the fact that, for better or worse, Batman is a celebrity both in our world and the Batman world. He's Batman. Like, the DC Comics do an okay job of touching on this every once in a while, but really, they're superheroes. Like, we idolize um, sports heroes in our universe. Imagine if we had a dude who was capable of stopping planets from exploding. What kind of character that would be, ultimately. Okay, and so so we're clear. So Batman, literally, as he was saving this guy from jumping off of, from jumping off the point, as he as he dived with him, he saw a hole in the cave face and said, "I think, I, you know what? I I think I'm gonna put a cave there, because that's just the kind of guy that Batman is. He's a multitasker." That's one word for it, I suppose. <laughs> Paranoid schizophrenic might be another. Well, paranoid, yes. Yeah. Schizophrenic. Come on, friend. Um, so from a gameplay perspective, guys, this... Are we dealing with snipers now? Is that what's happening? I think not yet. Okay. So Sorry, guys. The, spoilers! In the Metroidvania-esque style we talked about at one point, this game uses... We'll just bypass them. You come they back seem to the same totally areas. cool with you wandering yeah. by them. You come back to the same areas over and over and over, as makes sense for a game where it's all about picking up new gear and progressing farther along in the game. But as a result, un and unlike other games that do the same system, the game decides to ratchet up the difficulty as you go by it, which I think is a nice touch, where you'll revisit the same open area, but they add snipers or bombs or weirder things eventually. Ooh, let's check out some Amadeus Arkham secrets. My family's blood ran through the heart of Gotham. We were doctors, politicians, and teachers. We have been the organ cleaning the arterial filth from the city. We have been its servants, giving all to protect it. And still it has chosen to hurt us. So if we really, have really taken the time to explain the Arkham family that we've talked about obviously the origin of it and the story they hinted at that concept but so on top of this this kind of driving idea through the concept of Arkham that the place really is well cursed like a big part of the comic that the name that has the namesake for this game is Arkham Asylum 
The main character literally thinks he's possessed by the ghost of someone else. Well, I would even say by the ghost of the house. Yeah. But let's have a beautiful moon diving. You will wish that you can glide that well for the rest of this game, folks. I really wish the controls were that good <laughs> consistently. Yay, so we're in Batman's excessive money pit. Literal money pit in this case. One of them, in fact. <laughs> one of the many money pits. I still think he put one in like a TJ Maxx. I, I, I don't think you're wrong. Just in case the TJ Maxx was uh, taken hostage. Uh, if I learn nothing from the movies, it's the concept that Batman's more than happy to just put them anywhere. Like, swanky penthouse, basement of this building happens to be a bat cave as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's like... It's the fully furnished with computer I take issue with. Uh oh, bad computer guys. Here are the last notes she filed. I can't make sense of it. What does it mean? Looks like she was experimenting on the Arkham patients. This new chemical only barely resembles the original venom compound. There are a number of changes that appear to amplify the strength of the drug. Multiple references to a Titan formula. Even a small amount could trigger a venom like transformation in the host. Eliminating the need for the storage tank Bane requires. Hang on. These notes aren't complete. The formula is missing. That must be the secret Dr. Young is hiding. If Joker gets his hands on this, he will create an army of a thousand Banes. My god. Is Joker crazy enough to do that? Absolutely. Saying? You've got to stop him. So the Bat Claw! Arguably one of the more iconic items of the Batman universe. It's true. He loves a good grappling hook, our her. boy. She was heading to the to be fair, who doesn't? Cash. I'm going up top via the catacombs. I love it when Batman calls his shots and then you have to follow them. It's a <laughs> gameplay mechanic, I suppose. <laughs> It's like he's the Babe Ruth. He's like, I will be climbing this thing. You're like, aw, really? Will we? Yeah. Um, so to talk a little bit about Venom, because we talked about Bane. Um, so Bane was going about his business being a awesome Latino mercenary. Mercen well, he well he wasn't a, like he was in prison and he was fine. Yeah. He was like running the prison and like literally, guys, it's orange, just the new black. He's just, he's just V. He's just V. I to hear. Hey, I didn't mean. Oh dear. End this man's poor life. So before we start talking about Bane quickly, or Venom for that matter, um, there's an unofficial, official sequel, I guess, of sorts to Dark Knight, the Nolan, the second Nolan Batman movie, that some people recognize as what I'm talking about, and some people think I'm absolutely crazy. And apparently I can't get there yet, so that's stupid of me. But so, occasionally the Joker, and it's, I call it the continuation because it's very heavily influenced Oh, by the Joker in Arkham and sorry in Dark Knight Rises and it's kind of iconic where it's 
an exceedingly overly the top brutal Joker in a non kind of clown prince of crime way. Like he skins a guy in it at one point. Well, let's let's do some Arkham secrets, and then I will talk about Joker the gentleman and Joker the psychopath and how they interact. And Venom. As Gotham's veins slowly filled with pain and suffering, the effects were felt everywhere. My father fell first, infected by some foul disease. My mother lived on. Why are we the ones trying to- Don't let him hit me! So we'll give you that full one in just a second after we beat some goons. Yeah, I thought I'd keep playing over this. <laughs> um, that would kind of be really weirdly meaningful. Um, and we'll also try and get you some of the cool ambient dialogue that Paul Denny wrote for this because it is genuinely disturbing sometimes. Um, Deciphered messages. As Gotham's veins slowly filled with pain and suffering, the effects were felt everywhere. My father fell first. <sighs> Infected by some foul disease. My mother lived on, but only in a dream. I returned to the family home to care for her, for she remained in her bed for as long as her body continued to breathe. Her tears kept me awake at night. One of Joker's oldest aliases. So, Joker pays Dr. Young to create his army, and then all of a sudden he stops. Doesn't make any sense. So, I've read a couple comics that have Joker's original name being referred to as Jack White. So is there any sanity to that, or is that just a coincidence they seem to enjoy dredging up everyone? Um, okay, so now we have a big checklist of things to talk about, so we have to talk about Croc at some point, too, because we've yeah. met Croc brief briefly. One of my favorite Batman villains, actually. <laughs> Waylon? You like Waylon a bunch? I, I like Croc for the simple fact of he's not really a villain, he's just doing the only options open to him given that he's kind of some weird human hybrid crocodile thing. I, like, think, I think that's the big thing to remember with Waylon Jones. Sounds like she had a change of heart. She tried to block the payments. Joker doesn't like it when his partners try to back out. So he decided to get himself back to Arkham, find his formula, and create the army himself. Exactly. I don't think it's that exact. Hacked into her email accounts. Two mail stand out. The first is a resignation letter dated last week. Sounds like she was trying to get away. And the second? A message from Joker. Well, Jack White. It's a long thread. She's begging to stop the experiment, says it's too dangerous. He's not listening. Let's see. Random threats to her family, a couple of bad jokes. A picture of a dead baby is a threat. Go on. He says, I'm coming for you. I want what I paid for. And then another joke about wheelchairs. Lovely. And a drawing of some kind of donkey. 
No mystery why she's so scared. I'm coming up to the surface. I'll find her. <laughs> so, so, because the thing about Joker is that Joker is literally one of the most schizophrenic characters in the Batman comics. And I don't mean that because... He, he actually is schizophrenic. Because he could be diagnosed as schizophrenic. <laughs> I mean, because that's the thing about Joker is that he started out as this sort of like weird themed villain um, who was created um, based on the Victor Hugo movie adaptation of The Man Who Laughed. Victor Hugo wrote the novel. He didn't direct films because he's Victor Hugo. He invented The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, and Les Miserables. Thank you, Hugh Jackman. But Joker goes from being sort of very gimmicky and goofy. I mean, that's, that's you know, Cesar Romero in 66 um, in Batman, in the Batman TV show. I call it 66 because there's now a Batman comic that's just called Batman 66 that's sort of set in that weirdly goofy, sweet universe. Um Oh, let's listen to an interview tape. No, finish this, then we'll pick okay. it up, because we'll go back right into Croc. Um, yeah, so... Oh, it's all Croc. That's lovely. <laughs> um, so the thing about Joker is that un, in the hands of somebody like um, Alan Moore, who wrote Killing Joke, or Mark Millar, um, any of the sort of edgier writers, you get a very terrifying scare. You get the guy who skins people. Um... But Joker doesn't have to be that, is my point, I think. I think that one of the interesting things is that Paul Dini's version of Joker in Batman the Animated Series, um, and that, that feel sort of later carried on to the comics when they started to adapt the animated series for comics and to deal with Harley, um, Joker was not a psychopath. He was a very, he was a bad dude and he likes to pull very weird heists, but he was more, he was focused on sort of the cynicism and the humor and the idea that this, you know, this world is so broken that it's just kind of funny. And I think the thing that Heath Ledger does so well in Dark Knight is that yes, he, you know, kills a guy with a pencil through the eye. But it's also very clear that he's doing it because he thinks his, it's funny. And that's the big reason that he does things, is because they're funny. 